is www.smackcave.com. It's Drew, oh, Lizzie, no, them, Naja. We're going to do a live head mold no, of this them, poor girl. Should we sit here? All right. So, first off, this is going to be the most ghetto, quick, down and dirty life cast ever. Ever. Trash, can you come over here for a second? Ever. Quiet. Down. They're just. They're all that's the best way I can say it for. We'll be taping this down in a moment. Do I want to do an Uncle Faster impersonation? What's going on? <laughs> no worries. Any cast. straight hair we put the gasoline on so it doesn't get caught up. Casting her face. So it won't be like one of those yeah, sex jobs. So oh my. Yeah. You'll have like one eyebrow. Uh, I wanted to buy all the plastic. Mm -hmm. You don't your eyebrows. Nah, no, you're a bald man. Shush. With boobs. Oh, it's okay. You just need to be sure to say. Yeah, it's always better if somebody doesn't have I hair. Dude, he has a beard. Woman. Okay, you can be a bald one. No, that doesn't exist. With boobs. Medicaid doesn't have to be What? Nope. You will be. You will be. Wow, this is really boring. Can you get your knees in there? That'd be awesome. Then why don't we see all these uh, bald women? Okay. Alright. So you're saying one third of all women are bald. So what we're going to use is a material <coughs> called alginate. Alginate is a seaweed-based uh, yeah, goo. That's what they make vegan jello out of. Is that what they do? Yeah. They also use it. Uh, everybody actually has had it because uh, when your dentist made a mold of your teeth, alginate is actually what they use to make that mold. I thought you were talking about vegan jelly. Vegan jelly is what they use to make the mold of your teeth. Vaseline. Why we haven't finished? Because I want to still trim up the hair. I like purple vaseline. No. All right. We're just taping this up because it does get a little bit messy and we just don't want to mess up our clothes. So we're going to seal her all in. And again, this is the most down and dirty ghetto life cast ever because we only have one hour to actually complete it. How long does it normally take? You want to do an hour and a half to two hours. I mean, it's not the best thing. <coughs> but again, we are pressed for time. Especially since the guy before us was late. We stayed there for two and a half minutes. Wow. <laughs> That's probably a record. Now we're only going to do the front of her face. We don't really have to worry too much about the back. I'll be gentle with the hair. All right. So Drew is now going to Vaseline her up. Anything that's exposed. Add a little bit on the head as well so that we can make sure it all comes out easier. The list of materials, if anybody wants, um, and where to get them is over here on a flyer. You guys can grab it on your way out or whatnot. Are you going to have anything over my eyes? Actually, I don't know. Where? 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 <laughs> just fine, so we're going to just cover her whole head in it and just figure it out as we go. You might want a pair of these. Yes. Yeah, whatever you do, you don't want this stuff touching you on the skin. So we're just going to put this right on her face, though, but we don't want it touching our skin. Why not? Because it's just, it burns. Oh, it's, it's painful. And after a couple of days, the skin just starts peeling off. It's gross. It's okay for you. You'll be fine, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's completely, as long as you're not allergic to seaweed, it's fine. It, it has no, no harmful properties. <coughs> I eat sushi all the time. All right, so then you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And then on the scale. Mm -hmm. and then all the scale. Mm -hmm. Now, what exactly is the Vaseline? It's just a, to keep the alginate from sticking too much to the hair. Okay. Because if it gets in there and there's nothing in between, a lot of times what will happen is the hair will just create a lump in the mold. And it'll just be this odd looking thing. But if you Vaseline it up and get it nice and thinned out in there, then the alginate can get inside it. And then you'll get a nicer, uh, nicer mold out of it. Right, so I'm going to start mixing up the alginate. All right, so we're going to use two cups of water. And then we're going to sift in our alginate. A lot of times if we're doing this in the shop, we'll play like <coughs> mellow music for the girl, you know, or the, for the victim. Keep them calm. Sometimes if they're uh, claustrophobic also, you can put their feet in cold water. 
and it also helps them mellow out because uh, you are going to be basically covered completely in this material for about 15 to 20 minutes. You're not going to be able to see, you're not really going to be able to hear too well, and it can be a little frightening sometimes, especially the first time it's done. Yeah, if you have somebody who's got a beard, uh, you can do like beards and goatees <coughs> or mustaches and stuff, but again, you just gotta put a lot of Vaseline on it. <coughs> That'll usually keep it with no problem. <coughs> we're gonna mix up the alginate until it's a putty, almost pancakey batter type consistency. Maybe a little bit thicker, because again, we wanna rush this in a way. The uh, faster we do, was it the colder you said? Yeah, Greg. Well, I pulled out a set for you, didn't hand it to you. All right, here we go. Yeah, there's different setting times on the, the mold gel, on the alginate. Sometimes you can get stuff that'll set in five minutes, some of it's 10 minutes, and some of it's 15. This should be a 10 minute batch. We're just gonna help smooth it around, all down on our face. Not going back too far, we're just doing the front. And we're just gonna push it into the eyes. So don't push too hard. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your, your head tilted back just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. Come under the chin. Now, anytime that the mold gel gets over to your nose, just blow out, and we'll make sure it doesn't get anywhere near your nostrils. So continue to breathe. We haven't lost a victim yet this month, so don't worry about it. You'll be all right. You're in good hands. Do you refer to all your victims? They're all victims. Okay. There go. Coming around the mouth. Now, in the end, once you once you do something like this, what would you use a? Well, I'm going to show you. For? We're going to actually make the whole thing, and then we'll explain it. Oh, okay. uh, the life casts are used to to make masks, to do foam latex, to do appliances. When we're done with this, it's going to end up with a plaster bust. Uh, the plaster bust can be sculpted on to make uh, foam latex appliances. You can also use it to make masks. You can also do this as a full head and then split it in the back to get the head out of it and then make actual severed heads and body parts and whatnot for your kinky sex games. I'm sure that's what you perverts all want. Um, again, I, I have seen, you, you always see in movies when they're doing this, they stick straws up the person's nose. I find it just gets in the way and becomes a huge nightmare to try and work around these straws that are sticking out of someone's nose. So I, I, I think we tried it once because somehow in Hollywood it ended up that they used that in a movie and everyone who sees a life cast just assumes that you're supposed to stick straws up someone's nose. It's completely useless. Uh, we have also done tubes in the mouth if we needed someone in a screaming face. Because again, this stuff is the same material that your dentist put in your mouth to mold your teeth, except that stuff was flavored, like spearmint or cinnamon, that trail mix flavor, whatever the hell they have nowadays. Yeah, and um, so it's the same stuff and it's safe to go in the mouth, so you can do that. There you go. It's starting to gel up a little bit, so we're gonna be a little bit more careful, just letting it go by itself. Let's try and get rid of these drips. Right. You want to keep this as smooth as possible, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, the alginate, when it dries, it's going to stay soft. It never actually hardens in any way. So even when it's dry, it's still flexible and bendy and completely will not hold its own shape. So that's why we're going to cover this with plaster bandages afterwards to give it a strengthening mother mold outer shell. So now if you leave a lot of air bubbles and gaps in the alginate when you're letting it uh, coast over the victim's face, 
what's going to happen is you're going to have a very tough time when you put the um, plaster bandages over it, getting it to conform perfectly to the head. Because what's going to happen is there's going to be a gap somewhere, and when you turn this upside down and fill it with plaster, the plaster will push the alginate out to find that empty space, wherever an air bubble was, and you will end up with a lumpy face of the mold. Of course, if the person has lumps on their face, then it's not really that big of an issue. But if you want someone nice and smooth, but again, it is going to be in plaster. You can very easily sand it down and make it nice and smooth afterwards. That's the nice part about plaster. You can always clean it up after. All right? Almost Joe. We've got about another two minutes. Just watch your head, Drew, because you're blocking the camera. You want to walk around and show people who haven't touched the algae in your hands? You want to touch raw alginate because it's drying? It's okay. It's okay. It's all dry. Yeah, right? It's all dry. It feels like it's a little thumbs up here, so we'll make sure that's good though. Yeah. I do it with that great trick on the Yeah. You all three cameras. We've got three cameras. Yeah. Alright. Do you want something squishy? She doesn't die. Feel it. Evidence. Alright, it's almost chill. In the last, the last, the last demonstration, we took him throwing it all over the place and got Yeah, I kept yelling at him. He was tossing it into the crowd. And as you see, as it starts to dry, <laughs> it's peeling off. And it's this is dry algae. Oh, no, I, I, yeah. You can pass it around. You can see that it's it completely cannot hold its own shape. No, you really can't do it. It smells like. Yeah, sniff it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah stick it in your, in your nose. It's good. All right. So now. So now comes the next phase. This is now dried and it's nice and firm and we're ready to go. With the next phase, which is to reinforce these from the outside with plaster bandages. So these are standard plaster bandages you can pick up at any uh, medical supply place, uh, special effects supply place. We get them from monstermakers.com. You can also get them from hobby shops that sell model train stuff because model train, uh, to build the landscapes, they use plaster bandages. Oh, she's pretty All right, fine. So, uh, what I like to do with these, because one layer of plaster bandage is gonna take forever to you know, really give any strength, that's right, I did not put my phone on my phone. <coughs> All right, bad. All right, so what I did was to make this go quicker, each one of these batches of plaster bandages, actually four layers of plaster bandages, looped back over each other. So this way, every time I put one of these on, it's actually four layers. And that will make sure that we, first of all, that we go a lot faster and that we're going to have a lot more strength in there. And one of the most important things to do is to get all the moisture out of these because, again, we want it to lay perfectly tight to the actual uh, alginate. You don't want any gaps or any water in between. Try never to let the uh, plaster bandages touch skin. That's one of the very important bits. Um, it's not too bad, like full on plaster will give you a problem because it heats up so much that it will burn. But plaster bandages don't heat up too much, but they heat up enough to be uncomfortable. And now what we're gonna do, this is the most uncomfortable part for the victim, is we're going to actually be squeezing all the water out of these plaster bandages to get them to lie as, as tight as possible to the alginate. And the, al the uh, plaster bandages I cut into uh, lengths earlier, just kind of at random. I mean, I know there are some people out there who actually have uh, a formula of you know how many strips at this length and how this width to uh, to do a cast of the person's face if their face is approximately this. I just cut them at random and we figure them out as we go. Pull this nice and tight, make sure there's no moisture. And again, any gaps between the alginate and the plaster bandage will result in a messed up, lumpy mold of this poor girl's face. And of course, we're going to try and sell this on eBay, so we got to get it as nice as possible. We're going to pray she becomes famous so we can sell this as another sex doll. <laughs> now, each successive layer of plaster bandages are going to be overlapping the first one by just a little bit to make sure that there's no gaps or any place where the alginate can later on force its way out and make it uh, mess up the shape. As my helper monkeys push, keep that nice and tight. 
And this one's probably a little bit too long. So. Sometimes if, of course, you cut these and they're not the right size, you can always trim them down again and get the next batch done. And of course, remember, don't cover the nose with the plaster bandages as you're going through this layer. Uh, once we get down towards the nose, I have some little tiny strips that I've cut up, and these will kind of block out the shape of the nose to make sure that she still has a place to breathe through. Uh, we're not that mean. Don't forget to push into the eyes, yeah. Right. Let's go around the mouth. Have you had to get that off in an emergency? How, how long would it take? Actually, it would take almost nothing because the alginate, as you see how soft and pliable it is, she could tear out of it in two seconds if she really needed to. Um, the other material that you can use these days, uh, a lot of the alginate has uh, been forsaken for silicone. There's a new silicone out there called, it's called Body Double, uh, which is a skin safe silicone. So it's. Um, Basically, this alginate, once we're finished here and we've made the plaster mold, the alginate's gone. It's destroyed in the process. It can only be used once and never again, and it begins to shrink almost immediately upon drying. So once we're finished with this, we have very little time to actually go and make the actual plaster mold because the alginate's going to begin to shrink and we're going to start losing the, uh, the actual face. So to avoid that, because uh, if you wanted to make a severed head, you would start off with this process, you make the whole head, pull out a plaster positive of the head when we're finished. Then from there you'd have to make another mold on top of that plaster head to then fill with latex to make a severed head. So it's four stages until you actually get your severed head. If you use silicone, the silicone is skin safe and once the silicone is dry, it's used in place of the alginate. Once the silicone is dry and you put the plaster bandages on it again, the silicone can be reused anytime you want. You can take that mold and immediately fill it up with uh, you know, expanding foam or foam latex or something along those lines, and you would have a severed head within minutes of actually making the mold. The problem is the silicone is outrageously expensive. Um, literally, this is about, altogether the materials on this process cost about $150 to do one head. Silicone, this would be about $500 to $600 just for the one head. The silicone also takes a little bit longer to cure and it shrinks slightly as it goes and it's very uncomfortable. I can tell you horror stories of having that stuff on you. Also, any hair that it finds, it mechanically bonds to. So that hair becomes property of the silicone. I found that out by accident. Do you silicone? Yeah, you know if this is silicone. Um, the silicone takes about the same amount of time, but again, it is outrageously expensive. <laughs> The only beauty of it is you go right into making a severed head with no delay. So, if you have the money, it's the way to go. If not, we go with this. And this is our... Again, keeping the airways open. You never want to kill the person you're making a mold of. Well, maybe you don't. Okay. Okay. Don't know what you guys are doing it for. Reinforce that. You good? Okay. Almost done with this process. Then comes making the actual plaster head. You okay? It's a little bit of moisture coming out there. Go, 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 go. Almost there. Just want to keep it as tight to the nose as possible so we can make sure that the final piece is going to be very conforming to her. <laughs> One more piece. That should be it. Now we're going to let that dry for about not even five minutes and it should be all set. We can get somebody to run out and fill this up with water. Anybody? All right. Thank you. Now also since the alginate once it dries you can easily remove it so we get this bowl right back with no problem. Any questions so far on this process? You all right? It'll be done in about two minutes. We'll have you out of there. Okay. 
you all right? No, she's good. She's being abused. She's being abused? Right. Normally, actually, we get pretty mean about this point. We actually hold up little word bubble balloons on the side of her head and make fun of her and do all sorts of crazy mean stuff. But we don't know her well enough to yeah, really so abuse her. Yeah, so we need to give you prep time, really, so... Next time. And again, we're trying to do this as quickly and ghetto -ly as possible. Which one? You can even draw them if you really want to. Yeah. If you have fun, and if you really want to abuse the person, you can check to see if the plaster's dry by knocking on her head. Unfortunately, we learned that it actually reverberates so much through there that it, you know, literally will be as if you're banging a drum on their skull. So. Really? We learned that by accident. We had uh, Vaughn Armstrong, who played uh, the commander of Starfleet in Star Trek uh, Enterprise, the new series. Thank you. The new old series. The new, the new old series. Um, he was one of our victims in a life cast at Icon. And we're sitting there knocking on the, on the life cast because people were asking how hard the plaster gets. And people were coming up out of the audience and knocking on the head. And he came up to me afterwards and wanted to kick my ass <laughs> for letting strange people come and knock on his skull. Nice guy. If you ever see him at a convention, mention that you wanted to see his life cast. Yeah, this, this does start weighing a lot after a while. But between the alginate and the plaster bandages, you've probably got about, mm, say, almost 10 pounds sometimes on your head. And how we do it. Actually, you're pretty good. So remember, this is just going to be a quickie. All right, you ready? So you're going to lean forward. We're going to let gravity and the weight of the actual alginate and plaster Help. Now you're going to scrunch up your face and make faces and wiggle your face. Pull your cheeks out. Yeah, do that just to Smile. try and break the seal your between your head and the alginate. And viola. It's a quick down and dirty life cast. Done in like 15 minutes. I don't know how long it took. I kept getting like thirsty and wanting to cough. I, I, I can't <laughs> cough. I'll mess it up. Yeah. All right. All right. So now yeah, so we're going to take this. When I had a mold of my face done for art class, they actually put the plaster gauze straight on my face over the Vaseline. It burns, doesn't it? It doesn't burn. It just gets really, really warm and yeah. uncomfortable. I don't like doing that. Uh, I've seen also the. You know what? If you ask ten special effects artists how they do a life cast, you'll get ten different answers. I've seen so many different ways that this stuff gets done. Uh, from you want to tear her out? All right. Um, I've seen ways where people do the front half in alginate and then the back half in plaster bandages directly onto the skin. I've seen all sorts of craziness with that. Have a whole Oh, I'm sorry. Take the shirt. That's the picture of me on the website. It's me tearing out of the alginate of the uh, thing after my life. Goes. All right. So our next. Part of this project oh, is it's got a big round of applause. Yes. I love these victims. We weren't too mean to you, were, you? were we? No. All right. You didn't like the knocking towards the end. I warned you. I told you the knocking is bad. So now the next part we're going to do is mix up some plaster oh, bandages. Stuff in Have a seat, or if you want to head to the bathroom and wash off. Yeah. Your eyebrows over there and everything. Your eyelashes. Yeah, you just got to wipe the vaseline off. Here, you want some paper towels? Yeah. All right. Next. We're going to take this and fill it up with plaster to make the actual cast. Leave that here. So you have to plug up the nostrils, which is why we plug the clay to seal up the hole. Yeah, I'm going to go to the bathroom and get all this stuff up. We'll be back. Okay. Girls always have to go to the bathroom in pairs. You know. They're afraid of predators. <laughs> well, the predators are in here. No, it's true. Safety in numbers. So we're going to quickly seal up the nostrils. The velociraptor will come out of nowhere. Mow them down. Hey, what time did we start? Anybody know? You're kidding. That was the fastest life cast I think we've ever done. 22 minutes. That was amazing. All okay, right. About that. Now, for plaster, this is only there are many, many different kinds of plasters that you can use. The cheapest and easiest is Plaster of Paris. Um, plaster of Paris, if you're going to get it, get it from Home Depot. Don't get it from an art supply store. Art supply stores will charge you 
what, uh, $25 for a five pound box, while Home Depot will charge you $8 for a 20 pound bag. This is not uh, Plaster Paris. This is actually HydroCal, which is a really good material to use. The best material to use is called UltraCal 30. It is a hard, solid gypsum. When it dries, it is like stone. Um, it's great if you're going to be using this to make um, a mold that's going to be for foam latex, something that's going to go in an oven and be baked. Uh, it's a great, great, great material. But it's very expensive, and it takes forever to dry. So we're not going to use that because it takes too long. We're going to use HydroCal, which is the next one down from there. Great, great material. Uh, great strength. Handles heat very well, so you can use it in an oven when you want to bake your molds, which is another step of makeup. Um, but again, not too expensive, except for the shipping. Shipping, of course, is outrageous. All right, this is a very old batch. Here we go. Now, what I like to do is put the water into the bowl and then sift in the plaster until it makes little islands. That's how I do it. Everybody has their own way of mixing plaster. It's an art form, I think, but not a very good one. And our first layer of plaster going into this mold will be brushed in very gently to make sure that we don't leave any air bubbles or gaps between the plaster and the alginate. Everything is all about trying to keep the alginate, the plaster bandages, and the plaster as tight to each other as possible so that there's no deformities in the actual head when we're done. And, well, any more deformities than I should probably already have. Let's be honest, this is a convention that we're deformed in some way, right? We're all wackos and mutants. All right, so <laughs> I mix around the plaster. Hey, we got to yell at that guy for blocking the air conditioner, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the air conditioner's behind this little stage that they built. They did that just so I would sweat. I hate the air. So, <coughs> Now, how would you know if, if the, uh, the the life mold that you did already is, you know, not compromised in a way, you know? You really would. I mean, unless you can look in there and see a lump here and there. Sometimes you can, and you can give it a little nudge to push it back out, but for the most part, you won't know until the plaster comes out. But the beautiful thing about plaster is that you can always sand down plaster. So if it's a lump facing out, you can always sand it down to make it the right shape. And if it's a lump going in or a tear or a hole, you can always fill it with more plaster. So for the most part, you really can't lose with the plaster as long as you're decently okay at sculpting plaster. This is the reason why you have three people, two or three people putting the alginate on because they're taking care of each quadrant of the face, making sure it's, it's actually flush so, with the face. Do a very simple, there's the brush. I that. So he's going to brush that around and make sure that he gets every little nook and cranny. I'm going to hold it up a little bit. So he's going to make sure it gets into everywhere. While I mix this batch up just a little bit more. Very lumpy plastic for some reason. Again, this is our ghetto down and dirty life cast. As that gets smoothed in, really the face is the only part we really care too much about. The forehead and the chin and the uh, the rest of the sides are not really as important. Okay, this is starting to cure up nice and quick. Bring in a nice big lump. Sift that around. Yeah, this is the ultra quick, ultra cheap, down and dirty life cast. There we go. Get in the head. Unless Will Trails wants it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna hollow out the center and bring up the sides, and try and get that as smooth as possible. 
Now, Ultra Cal and Hydra Cal and Aero from Paris, they heat up very well, a lot, when they're drying. So you don't want to be touching this or get any of this on your skin. I know there are some people who do think that you can put plaster directly to skin with uh, Noxzema Barrier or, uh, what's the other one? Some of the barrier cream that somebody else was using that I was reading about. Not Noxzema, it's something else. But they would put that on their, on their skin and then think that they could put plaster directly onto the skin without a problem. So this is already starting to set up. The brushes could be cleaned, but for the most part, they're thrown out. <coughs> a lot of stuff in special effects is one shot and then throw away. You're missing every other eyelash? I don't think so. You all right? Yeah. Like being bored. I'm thirsty. Really? Yeah. Okay. I thought there's more. If you drink a lot of water beforehand, you won't be as thirsty. You but then you got to pee. Yeah. And then, depending on how well the person that knows you is actually doing a live case, I'm going to poke at your bladder a little bit. <laughs> you can't be pretty mean. Yeah, like, you're never doing what you're doing. We're going to sit down. This is starting to set up nicely. Another five minutes. Any other questions as we're going for the last few moments of this? How long have you been doing this? Uh, what time is it now? Um, no. um, this is. Well, I did my first live cast in 1990. <coughs> First time I actually molded someone's head. Um, uh, after that, I took a very long break until uh, God, what was the next one? Probably 2002. I think I've been doing this about five years professionally. You did a lot of hands, feet, body. Yeah, we did body parts. Like in college, I did a lot of crazy stuff, and I wanted to go into it professionally, but I just didn't know how to break into it because these were in the days before internet. And um, after that, kind of went on my own way in every other job you can name, and then accidentally fell back into special effects. Uh, about five years ago. So this is pretty much dry. Right. It's actually it's pretty easy to learn. He's running the whole show. I'm helping. This is actually only my second actual live cast. So and it's it's pretty much standard stuff each time. This is her first time doing it. So it's just kind of just look out for the person, make sure they're going to be able to breathe. That breathing is good. Yeah, breathing's the yeah. breathing thing. Good. It's a lot easier with the tube in the mouth because that's <coughs> a bigger thing protruding. So it's a lot easier to know for sure that it's not being blocked. So this thing weighs a ton now. We're going to give it another minute. It's pretty much set, but I just wanted to give it another few seconds just to make sure that it's not going to break apart as we pull it apart. This is a very old bag of plaster that I found hidden in my shop. I don't know how many years old it is, so it's kind of gone. It's part of it's actually, if you reach in, there's actually chunks that have already dried from the humidity in the shop, so it's a bad batch of plaster. You know what the, the subject? Usually you want a um, clean face, no makeup, jewelry, gone, nothing like that. You know, because that's just going to get in the way. And of course, you can't have them in a screaming face or in, you know, other, you know, weird facial expressions. Uh, the Jack Nicholson one from Batman, uh, he was, you know, in that smile so they could get his cheek so that they could make that appliance for him. All right, so I'm going to try. That was a creepy one. What's that? That, that was creepy. Yeah. All right, so we can show the garbage. <laughs> now, trying to peel this back out. A lot of times what I basically do is I just destroy the plaster band. It's just the easiest way to tear the whole thing out without having to really bother trying to get it nice. Because again, all this stuff is disposable. None of this stuff can be ever be reused anyway. So you really have no reason to be careful with the plaster bandages or the algae. So it's a one-shot deal? It's a one-shot deal unless you're using silicone, like I said. The outside is a one-shot deal. The inside is what we keep using it right. Okay. If you do it right, you don't need to do it again, in theory. If you notice the, the gray parts that blocked up the nose, that's actually mucus. <laughs> what is he saying? Yeah. No, it's clay. That is probably She's blowing your nose the whole time on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the reason why I'm not doing it. I just feel, you know, scared to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't pleasant, but like, it wasn't bad. It was <coughs> not bad enough that I, that I did it twice. Like, I got, but anyway, the girl's makeup was like, you could look at the inside of the mask, but oh, you yeah, could have lipstick on the, where the lips are, and like, eye shadow on the. All that stuff taken out. There we go. The quick down and dirty life test. That's your face. That's cool. Yeah. No spots. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
spots in between, you file down. Um, and again, yeah, anything yeah, else you could ever have like, on a screwdriver, you, you like can just split on my lips. That's crazy. You can do everything. Alginate will pick up fingerprints. If you actually make a mold of someone's hands, you will have their fingerprints. Very scary and fun. Hey, I have it. There's one of my eyebrow hairs in here, and one of my eyelashes in there here. There you go. Too. A little DNA for you. Let's pass that around and show everybody. <coughs> and it's still hot because it's still actually curing, but again, I wanted to finish that up. Put that out of there. Put down here for the cameras. Let's get the ears. There you go. Oops, sorry. Here you go. <sighs> Oldest digital camera ever. Yeah, it's got a crank. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, yeah, you can see a little bit in the eye in the eye socket that can always be taken out with a chisel. And same thing with the nostrils. And anything that these little air bubbles. Usually, I'll take a sander anyway and belt sand this off to get it nice and smooth. Fill this in with whatever plaster to get it ready and a rasp to get rid of the hard edges around the edge. <coughs> That's it. Now That's a light cast in less than an hour, actually, not even. 38 minutes? 30. Holy crap. That's the fastest I've ever done this. Wow. All right. This is our gift to you. Enjoy. Thank you. So, again.